Okay, so uh, we're pleased to have Konstantin Loginov from Moscow, who's going to talk about non-rational degenerations of the Alpazzo surfaces. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in this marathon. So yeah, I will talk about uh, rationality problem, um, and in particular um, with uh, uh, in particular about uh, degenerations of fun of varieties, and uh, more precisely of delta beta surface. So we all know what is a delta beta sur surface. Uh, so I will specify what do I mean by a degeneration. So. Um, yeah, let me write it down. So if, yeah, we work over the field C and um, if S is a smooth uh, dot beta surface, uh, which means that um, minus KS is ample, then we know that this implies that S is rational. Okay, this is classical. Uh, however, if we consider some degeneration, so I will explain what I mean by, by this a bit later. So if we consider a degeneration of, of uh, S, you know, we can get a non-rational surface. And let me, give you an, uh, let me give you a simple example. So consider, for example, a um, surface S3 inside P3, which is uh, just a cone, over a plane cubic curve. So we consider a plane uh, uh, elliptic curve, we consider a cone over it, which lives in P P3. So by adjunction formula, clearly this is uh, a delta su surface by which I mean that minus Ks is ample. Uh, but also it is obvious that S3 is birational to the product of P1, and a smooth uh, elliptic curve, that is uh, a curve of genus one. In particular, S is not uh, rational. So um, now, uh, what do I mean by degeneration? We can consider a family X over the base Z, Z. Uh, so by a family, I mean flat projective morphism, uh, Z is one dimensional. So this is just a curve and dimension of X is three. Okay, so, and we, sorry. Of X is three. And uh, minus KX is ample uh, is ample over Z. So, so such families uh, naturally appear, for example, in uh, the minimal model program. So yeah, uh, we can consider such a family and uh, if we assume that X has good singularities, has good singularities, then the question is, uh, can we say something about the special fibers of uh, the family X. That is, so if F is a fiber over some point Z, where Z belongs to the base. Okay, so this is a general question. If X uh, has good singularities, for example, if X is non-singular, Okay, then clearly a, a general fiber is a smooth uh, del beta surface. Okay, and in particular, the uh, general fiber is rational. However, uh, the special fiber uh, may be uh, a singular del beta surface and uh, hence it may be non-rational. So for simplicity, uh, we can assume that, so uh, for simplicity, uh, we can assume that all fibers are, for example, reduced and irreducible, and um, th then um, special fibers can be non-rational. But in, in fact, in this setting, uh, we have the following proposition, uh, which is very easy to prove. 
So let me say that this is a preposition. Uh, uh, by good, here I mean, so to consider a very simple example, let, let us assume that X is in fact smooth. Then, uh, yeah, F X is smooth and the fibers are irreducible and reduced. So th this is an assumption just in this very special case. Uh, then if F is non-rational, Uh, then, uh, non-rational, then uh, F is birational, sorry, F is birational to the product of P1 and the curve C, such that the genus of C is equal to 1, precisely 1. So, so actually, this proposition says say that uh, everything is uh, as in this model example. So the general fiber is non-rational, the special fiber is a cone, is birational to, to, to a product of P1 and an elliptic curve. Okay, so this proposition is uh, uh, in fact uh, easy to prove. Okay, so now we can consider the same problem in, uh, in the slightly more general setting. Uh, so I will specify what do I mean. So we can generalize this situation as follows. So again, we will consider a family F over the base Z. Uh, we will call uh, so we, we will call F a KLT uh, FANA vibration. So what do I mean by, by this? Uh, so KLT is a special class of sing singularities. Uh, FANA condition means that uh, minus KX is ample over Z. Uh, moreover, we, 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 we say that F is a contraction ample over Z. F is a contraction uh, X, X has KLT singularities. Okay. And Again, again, we consider a three-dimensional case. That is, dimension of X is three, dimension of Z, the base is one. Okay, so uh, we consider the following setting and we study the fibers of such vibrations. Okay, again, why uh, such vibrations are Important, uh, one of the reasons is that they appear in, in uh, the minimal model program. Okay, then, then what can we say about the fibers? So naturally, if F is a general fiber, so say if F is general, then it has KLT singularities, uh, since X has KLT singularities. And it follows that F is uh, rational. Okay, but again, this uh, again, special fibers can be non-rational. So, in this uh, setting, we consider a more general situation. Namely, we may assume that F uh, is not so. F is reducible and non-reduced. So MI are just some multiplicities of the components FI, okay? 
uh, then we can consider the reduction of f. This is just the sum of all its prime components. Okay, then it is known that the reduced special fiber uh, that it, it, it is uh, rationally chain co connected. Okay, so it is. Oh, sorry. Rationally chain connected. Okay. Uh, by which we mean that uh, any two, uh, say, general points can be uh, uh, joined by a chain of, of rational curves. Okay. So uh, this implies that each component fi is unirule. That is, each fi is birational to the product of P1 and some smooth projective curve C. Uh, the question is, question is, what can we say about this curve C? So can we uh, somehow bound some geometric invariance of this curve C? So why we interested in it because we um, our aim is to bound irrationality of fi somehow and it is natural to consider the invariance of uh, the, the curve c so uh, the uh, maybe the main invariant of such a curve is is its genus g of c but actually it turns out that it is more natural to work with uh, ganality of C. So I will recall the definition in a moment. So uh, the question is, can we bound, can we bound uh, this invariance in terms of some uh, properties of the family X. So recall that uh, the canality of a projective curve is just a minimal degree of uh, a subjective morphism from a curve to, to uh, P1. Okay, so just a min minimal degree. Well, it turns out that yes, we can bound uh, this invariance. There is a theorem, uh, theorem one, uh, proven by Kocher Birkar and myself. So um, the theorem is as follows. So in the above setting, uh, we can fix the number t, positive real number. Uh, we can consider the previous situation and the following statement holds. So in this theorem, we assume that f is again irreducible uh, for simplicity. Later, we, we will get rid of this property. And now the crucial thing is that the pair X and T F red, so F may be non-reduced, uh, is log canonical. Okay, so we bound the singularities of the pair X and uh, T F red. So if it is log canonical, then the following statements hold. So then, first of all, as I, as I explained above, F red, uh, red, so its reduction is birational to a product of P1 and smooth projective curve C. 
such that the canality of C is bounded only in terms of this number T. Okay, so this means that for a fixed positive number T, if X T F red is log canonical, then the canality is bounded by some constant which depends only on T. This is the first uh, assertion. Then the second assertion is as follows. If T is greater than one half, then the genus of C is also bounded only in terms of T. And the third, state, uh, third assertion is that if T is equal to one, then the genus of C does not, is not greater than one. So in a sense, the third case, in the third case, we have some generalization of the examples that I gave in the beginning of my talk. Okay, so this is theorem. Uh, and let me comment on the third assertion because uh, this case is the simplest. It is uh, rather, it's not difficult to prove. So the first two assertions are rather hard to prove. Let me comment on, uh, let me sketch the proof of the third assertion. Okay, so, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Um, Yeah, let me prove, prove uh, the third assertion. So we can consider, oops. Yeah. So let S be Let S be the normalization of F red. So I will denote it by F red nu. So the, the normalization of F red. Uh, then we can do a junction. So we can write that Ks plus delta Ks plus delta is Kx plus F red restricted to S. Since we know that t is equal to one, it follows that this pair is log canonical. And hence we can do a junction on S, uh, delta is a different on uh, S, and uh, this pair is also log ca canonical and it is uh, uh, a log final pair. Okay, so S and delta is a log final pair which means that minus K S minus Delta is ample. Okay. Uh, look for a surface pair. Then we can do the following thing. We can consider a minimal resolution of S 
which I call T. And then we can run the minimum model program uh, for the canonical class on T. Okay, so th th this is the minimal, the minimal resolution. And this is just the minimal model program. Okay, so uh, what will be the output of the minimum model program? Uh, well, there are actually two. Uh, so naturally, V will be a more uh, fiber space, and there are two possibilities. Either V is P2, okay, which means that Uh, it is birational to, of course, it is birational to P1 cross P1, which means that uh, in the above notation, G of C is equal to zero. Okay, so it is just a rational surface and uh, this case is not very interesting. Or we have uh, a P1 bundle. Okay, so V has the structure of a P1 bundle over some curve, which I again uh, will call by C, P1 bundle. And uh, uh, this case is a bit more interesting. And our aim is to bound the genus of C. Okay, how we will do this? Uh, Actually, we can uh, consider a boundary state, uh, theta such that uh, V of theta is a, so let me write it as follows. There exists, oops. There exists a boundary theta uh, such that the pair V theta is log canonical and the pair it is numerically zero, so so called local labial pair. So, one can show that there exists such a boundary divisor, so effective divisor. Okay, uh, this is not, not hard. And then we can write down the usual uh, formula for the canonical bundle of vibration, which says that KV plus theta is, if I denote this morphism by H, it is a pullback of the ca canonical class on C plus two divisors, which I call theta C and MC. So this divisor, uh, yes, sorry, MC. Okay. So we, we know that the left hand side is, numeric, uh, is numerically trivial. Uh, the divisor theta C is called um, uh, discriminant part, and the divisor MC is called the moduli part. Mm, we know that theta C is effective, and the moduli part is pseudo effective. Okay. But uh, since the left hand side is numerically uh, trivial, uh, so it follows that the degree of this divisor on the curve C is also zero. And from this, it follows that the, the degree of KC is not greater than zero. Okay? And this implies that C is either 
uh, a smooth rational curve or a smooth elliptic curve, okay? So g of c is not greater than one. And the third assumption is proven. So any questions so far? No? Okay, then let us move on. So yes, uh, now let, let me formulate uh, the previous theorem in a more general setting. So actually it turns out that uh, this theorem is, uh, so, so uh, a more general statement is, is uh, uh, more suitable uh, to, to, so it is in a sense more natural to prove a general statement, okay? So let me formulate another setting. Now, let f from, so let f be a so-called DLT uh, fun of vibration. So DLT mono vibration. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, so well, I will not explain uh, the definition of, of uh, DLT singularities. This is just some uh, good class of singularities, which is uh, slightly bigger than KLT singularity. So what do we mean by a DLT fauna vibration? We mean that F is a contraction. The pair X, B, so B is a boundary divisor, is DLT, so divisorial log terminal. Uh, now, minus kx minus b is ample relatively over z, uh, over z, yeah, and uh, I guess this is it. Ah, yeah, about the dimensions. So, dimension of x again is three. Uh, and now the dimension of x, uh, sorry, of z, z is at least one. So this is a more general setting because uh, in this setting z can be a curve, it can be a surface or it can be a threefold. That is, f may be a birational morphism, okay? In this case, the word vibration is a bit non-standard, non but, but still, so this is a setting. Okay, again, uh, in this setting, the general fiber is a DLT upon a surface, DLT del peta surface, it is rational, okay? But the special fiber, it, in this case, it can be uh, uh, reducible, components maybe non-reduced, so this is a general setting. Uh, but we can bound, it turns out that we can bound uh, non-operationality of the components of the special fibers. So let me formulate it as a theorem. So this is a theorem two. Uh, yeah. So it's theorem two. Uh, again, we fix, we fix a positive real number, T. And uh, 
And uh, we say that in the above setting, uh, let D be a prime divisor on X. So D is just a prime divisor uh, such that F of D is a point on Z. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Naturally, it is a generalization of the previous setting. So of course, if D is a component of a fiber, uh, then D is mapped to a point. But, but in this setting, uh, we just say that uh, yeah, D, D, D is contacted to a to point, to point on Z. Uh, OK, now we also assume that, uh, so I will write, write it down and then I will explain what I mean. Uh, mu of D inside B is at least T. At least T. So what do I mean by this? I mean that uh, D is a component of the bounded divisor B with the multiplicity at least T, which is a fixed positive real number. Okay, then as above, uh, D is birational to a product P1 and C, P1 and C, uh, and the ganality of C is bounded in terms only of T. Okay, so th this is the first thing. The second thing is that if T is greater than one half, then genus of C is bounded. And then as above, if T is equal to one, then the genus of C is not greater than one, okay? So th this is a theorem, theorem two, okay? Uh, naturally, uh, theorem one follows from theorem two, so it is a more general statement. Okay, now let me comment on uh, these assertions. So actually, uh, there are examples that show that um, these that the assertions one and two are uh, the best that we can have in this setting. So namely, uh, example one, it shows that if we don't fix T, uh, then we can have component, so we can have a, comp uh, a divisor D uh, such that the canality of C is as, as large as, uh, well, as we wish, okay? So we, we will consider a family. We will start from a trivial family over the base, P2 times Z. Then we will consider some fiber over a closed point, P2 times some point Z, inside Z. And we will consider some curve C inside P2, uh, such that, so, ganality of the curve C is large. So we can just have a curve of a, uh, a very large degree, for example, and then the canality will also be uh, large. 
Okay. So, and then we will blow up this curve. So if this family is called X prime, then we will consider the variety X double prime, which is just the blow up of the curve C on X prime. This is mapped to Z. Okay, and then we can consider, so let us call this fiber F prime, and we can c consider the strict preimage of the fiber F prime inside X prime prime. So let, let us call it F double prime. And then it, turn, it turns out that we can blow down uh, the component F double prime. And this will be our X. So this arrow is just the blown the blow down of F double prime. So the picture is as follows. We start from a fiber F prime and the curve in it, curve C. Then we blow it up and our special fiber becomes reduced. Uh, it, it is, now it is reducible. Now it has two components. One is isomorphic to P2 and one is just a ruled surface. And then we blow down this plane, okay? And we get a cone. So one can show that this component can be blown, blown down and we will get a cone over the curve C. And naturally, we have a morphism to Z, okay? So this is a cone. Uh, well, one can show that actually, one can show that X has KLT singularities. And moreover, we can choose the boundary gamma on X, such that th this pair is KLT and uh, the component, uh, let me call it E. This will be this cone. Uh, the component E, it belongs to the boundary gamma with some small coefficient A. So, so it, it sits inside I will write it like this. It belongs to, to the boundary gamma. But A is, can be very small, okay? A is a positive number, it can be very small. And the higher uh, the degree of C is, the smaller the number A is, okay? So, this example shows that if we don't fix uh, the number T, uh, the canality and the genus of the curve C may be arbitrarily large, okay? This is the first example. And there is also the second, uh, second example, uh, which mm, says that in the second assertion of the theorem, uh, the constant one half is better is the best that we can have. Namely, if T, so the second example, it shows that if T is one half or smaller, then uh, the, then genus of C 
also maybe arbitrarily large. Okay, then we can have uh, G of C. G of C as large as we wish. Okay, and this example is constructed in a similar way. So I will not uh, comment on this in detail, but uh, instead of the trivial family of P2 and the base, we will consider the trivial family, we will start from the trivial family of uh, the way the projective pl uh, plane and the base. So, Z maps to Z. Uh, where the weights of this, uh, for this weight the projective plane are 1, 1, and n. So n is any number starting from, say, 3. Okay, then again, we can consider some fiber of this family. Uh, this is just the weighted projective plane. We will consider a curve C in it, in some fiber. Uh, which will be a smooth, a smooth hyper elliptic curve. Okay, one can e easily write down the relevant equation. Uh, so, smooth hyper elliptic curve of degree 2n. Uh, of course, its canality is 2 by definition, but the genus may be arbitrarily large. In fact, uh, so g of c is n minus 1 if the de degree is 2n. Okay, and then we will re repeat the same uh, procedure as in the previous example. That is, we blow up C, then we blow down the stick transform of the weighted projective plane, and we will get a KLT uh, fun of vibration uh, such that um, genus of, of C is arbitrarily large. So the, the, these two examples show that in theorem two, uh, this is the best uh, estimate that we can have. Okay. If there are no questions, I move on. Okay, uh, actually it turns out that we can formulate even more uh, general uh, theorem. So I will not do this, but I will say a couple of words uh, about it. So it turns out that uh, we can generalize uh, this uh, result. Uh, we can work with uh, uh, not log fano vibrations. So recall that a log fana vibration in the above uh, theorem, it was uh, just a morphism from this variety X uh, to Z with some properties. Okay, uh, the main property is that minus K X minus B is ample. Okay, so this is a fun of, uh, log fun of vibration. But instead, we can work with uh, so-called log Calabiao vibrations. So, oops. By a log Calabiao vibration, I, I, I mean, I mean that the pair Kx plus B is trivial over the base, say numerically trivial over the base. So actually any uh, log fana vibration, uh, it, it is uh, 
a local labial vibration if we change the boundary somehow. If we add something to the boundary, then it naturally be becomes uh, a local labial vibration in the same class of singularities. Okay, so uh, yes, and we work uh, with local labial vibrations of phonotype. Phonotype. So I will not uh, recall the definition, but this is just a bit smaller class of uh, local labial vibrations. And it turns out that uh, this setting is uh, uh, very suitable for, for proving the theorem. Okay, so I guess I, I don't have uh, t time to explain the idea uh, of uh, the proof. I guess I have uh, four more minutes. So I will, the remaining minutes, I will say uh, the following thing. I will say that actually uh, to prove the theorem for the three-dimensional uh, vibrations, uh, one has to start with the two-dimensional case. That is where dimension x is two, and dimension of z uh, dimension of z is between zero and two. Okay. Then we can formulate the same, uh, we can fo formulate similar statement. So let u be a positive real number. Uh, x, the pair xb is uh, a local IBL vibration over z. So uh, for some boundary B, so it is local IBL over Z. Uh, so, and suppose that there is a component of the boundary that is mapped uh, to a point. Okay, so D is some component of the boundary that is mapped to a point on Z. Uh, and suppose that the multiplicity of D inside the boundary is at least U. Then we can formulate uh, the same, uh, the, we can formulate similar statements. Namely, that is the canality of D is bounded. So D is some prime divisor, it's just a curve. So we can define canality is bounded. Again, is U is greater than one half, then the genus is bounded. Uh, let me say the genus of the normalization, yeah, sorry, of D. And if U is equal to one, then the genus is at most one. And we have one more thing. If the dimension of the base is at, at, at least one, then again, the genus is at most one. Uh, so yeah, uh, we say that XB is log canonical, log calabiao over Z. For the two-dimensional case, we do not we do not need the condition of phonotype. But for in three-dimensional case, yeah, we need to work with phonotype pairs. But here, just local labial property works. 
So actually, uh, this theorem is quite surprising since uh, log Calabi-Yau surface pairs are not bounded because even log Fana pairs in dimension two are not bounded. But it turns out that if we specify this u, this number u, then the components of the boundary, they are bounded in this precise sense. And this is a very interesting uh, thing in my point of view. Actually, this theorem is not very hard to prove, especially uh, the last two cases, they are uh, very simple, but the case, the, the assertions one and two are also not very difficult. So this theorem comes as a, some sort of surprise for me, mm, but still uh, it holds. So I guess I stop now. Unfortunately, I don't have time to explain the idea of the proof of the main theorem, uh, but th this is it. If you have questions, please ask. Thank you. So thank you for the talk. Uh, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, any questions by chance? By anyone? Not I'm going to ask a question. Okay. So uh, so so what do you use here about dimension three? Because. Uh, um, yeah. Actually, uh, the proof relies on the uh, dimension uh, heavily. It mm, so at least some parts of uh, the proof rely on the uh, dimension, but. Um, Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that I can explain because uh, I, I will have to go in, into, into details. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, so the initial idea was to prove uh, the, the a, a analogous result in any dimension. But it turned out that uh, all that we can do is to work with dimension three. And moreover, the methods for proving the dimension two case and dimension three case are like different, are completely different. Oh, really? And, yeah, and they, this is an interesting uh, thing. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm not able to explain it without going into details, so. Okay, but, but do you use any of these, uh, like, um, for example, the classification of terminal thing rate is in dimensions? Uh, no, no, we work with, with, with uh, uh, DLT pairs, and the, 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 there are no the, there is no classification for for DLT singularities. Okay. No, we, we uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Are there other questions by chance? Or if there are no other questions, then maybe I will thank you again. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Have a good one, and. Uh, I stopped the recording here.